Good morning guys! Today we are going to talk about JavaScript iterators, what they are, how to use them outside of the box and how to create the custom ones. But before we begin, let me quickly grab some coffee. to make a video about asynchronous iterators, but soon I realized that talking about asynchronous iterators is almost impossible without explaining regular iterators. Back in 2015, as a part of AS6 specification, we got a couple of new features which are relevant to the topic of iterators. These are for of loops, generators and symbols. All of them allow us to use what we call the regular iterators. They help us iterate through specific types of data easier than ever before. For of loop is probably a good starting point to show how this works. You can use for of loop out of the box for such objects as strings, maps, arrays, and sets. Let's try a couple of examples. So let's take an array of cities and iterate through them uh, with for of loop. By the way, this is our the cities where I lived for some time. Let's console log every city. And we can see the list of the cities which we defined. Let's do the same for a single string. So let's say we have a city Berlin and let's iterate through its characters. So I mentioned before that we can use for of loops to iterate through such types of objects as arrays, strings, map sets. But what will happen if we try to iterate through just a custom object? So let's try this. So let's define some kind of an object which, uh, since we playing with the cities, uh, it will be some city Berlin. And let's console log the item. Oops. So if you run this code, we see an exception. Obj is not iterable. Okay, let's give a try for just a number. Ah, we have the same. So for of loop cannot iterate neither through custom object nor through numbers because those are not iterable. So what does it actually mean for us? Let's hear the reputable and respectable in these questions MDN. The iterable protocol allows JavaScript objects to define or customize their iteration behavior, such as what values are looped over in a for of construct. Some built-in types are built-in iterables with a default iteration behavior, such as array or map, while other types, such as objects, are not. So iterable objects are the ones which define the iteration behavior. And in order to be iterable, an object must implement the iterator method, meaning that the object or one of the objects up the its prototype chain must have a property with the iterator key, which is available via constant symbol iterator. That's, by the way, where symbol comes into play. So this should add a bit more clarity. But if you scroll a bit down, you will notice that we have also the iterator protocol. Wouldn't we enough with iterable protocol? Why do we need another iterator protocol? What we have here is that iterator protocol defines a standard way to produce a sequence of values and it does so through a method next. If you are still confused, I don't blame you. I was totally lost when I saw this at first. Let's look at the examples to understand it a bit better. First, let's come back to our examples and check if they do have methods with symbols iterators. And we can check it by seeing if our objects have property with the name symbol iterator. So let's do it for the array. And you can see that actually we have a property with the name symbol iterator of our array cities and its type is a function. So obviously array is implementing the interface uh, iterable for the cities. Let's check it as well for our string Berlin. Uh, 
and we see the same its function. And for our custom object, it's undefined, so it doesn't implement the iterable protocol and it doesn't have uh, a function with the name symbol iterator. This sounds interesting, but can we iterate manually without needing for of loop? And what was about that next method? Yes, we can. And actually, method next is very relevant to the question. In fact, under the hood, for of loop calls the method next. For example, coming back to the list of our cities, let's first delete all the junk and initialize an iterator for the cities, which we do by calling the operator symbol method. And now we can call the method next of this iterator. Let's console log what we get. And we got the first value for Madrid. Let's copy and paste console log a couple of times to see that we get next values of our array. And we got Berlin and Dresden. Let's copy and paste this for one last time, I promise, so that we see what happens when we run out of the items of, from our array. So we got that the done became true instead of false and the value is now undefined. So we don't have anything in the array anymore. These examples give us the basic overview on how iterators can be used out of the box. But to understand better how they work from inside out, the best way is to create our own custom iterator. Let's do it. There are actually two ways to do it. One is implementing the interfaces manually and the second one is using generators. Since we don't look for easy ways, we will start with manual implementation. Generators will do all the heavy lifting for us, but by doing the iterators manually, we will understand better how the protocols come into play. What should we take as an example? I ran out of coffee. Okay, I found what we can use. Have you heard about such number sequence as Pascal triangle? I haven't, but I think it fits us perfectly. Look at this. So they say, to build the triangle, start with one at the top, then continue placing numbers below it in a triangular pattern. Each number is the number directly above it added together. I actually found a better representation with some animation. It always starts with one, but the numbers in the middle are actually the sum of the numbers above. So here we have one and one, two, and the three and three is six. So let's build an iterator which will return us row by row of a Pascal triangle. There are many different ways to calculate items of the sequence. I found one formula we can use. Maybe there are better ways, but since this is not the primary focus of this video, I don't want to spend too much time on it. First and last elements will always equal one. And with a for loop, let's create the inner elements. Okay. And here is the formula which I mentioned before. So the element is equal the previous element multiplied by this stuff. Let's console log it as well. And now if we run the function, let's see what we get. Yay, I think we got the correct value. So let's run again and again and again. Yay, I think it works correctly. Have you noticed that Pascal's triangle is symmetrical? So for example, when we look at this particular row, uh, we start with 1, 6, 15, 20. And then we end with 15, 6, 1. So we don't actually need to calculate the second part. We can only calculate the first one. I mean, till the middle, right? So let's improve a bit our algorithm.
function which will do calculations for one line, but we still cannot use it as an iterator yet. Let's start with implementing the iterator protocol. It looks a bit more straightforward and more practical. So we need to implement a method next, which will take zero arguments and will return an object with two properties, done and value. Instead of console login, let's return the row and let's remove these lines. We don't need them. Let's create a function which will make our Pascal triangle row iterator and set maximum values, which will do it. Uh, the first number, row number is zero and it returns as we should do the function next, which takes zero arguments and depending on the row number, it should either generate a new row or return that it's done. So if the row number less than maximum, we should call our function calculate Pascal row, Pascal triangle row and send there a row number and we increment it here. So every time we get the new, the new row. Okay. And in case we reach the maximum, then we should return done equal to true. To make sure that I didn't do any mistakes and the code is still valid, I'll just run it to see if I receive my function. Yes. And we can proceed to create a new iterator based on the function we just created. Let's put maximum as a 15. And now let's run the next method of our new iterator and let's console log the value. And we got one which is expected. If we run multiple times this line, then we get more and more rows from the Pascal triangle. Let's remove this and try running for off loop with our new iterator and see what we will get. And we got again, new iterator is not iterable. Not iterable because we haven't implemented the iterable protocol yet. So in order to be iterable, an object must implement the iterator method. So it should have a property with an iterator key, which is available via constant symbol iterator. So for the start, we need an object. As an object, let's use an empty function. We don't need any content for now, I think. But what we need is to extend its prototype with a property symbol iterator. And it will reference a function which we created before. Let's create a variable which will be an instance of Pascal triangle row. And finally, finally, we can use the for of loop and let's see if it will work for us. So let's iterate over iterable and console log what we will get. And nothing. Okay, what is wrong? I think we set everything properly. We have a new instance of Pascal triangle row. We have... Hmm. Okay, maybe this maximum value is wrong. Let's replace it uh, with the 15 and run again. Okay, so that was an issue. Apparently we cannot use any parameters as a part of our symbol iterator method. Now we have both protocols in place, iterator and iterable, and we can create new rows both with method next and with for of loop. And even though we did it in a properly legitimate way, there is a shorter path by using generators. So let's create a generator. Generators are declared a bit differently from a function. They have a star at the end. So let's create a generator with the name row generator. And for the start, let's make an infinite generator. For this, we can use while loop with condition, which is always true. And inside of it, we will call our calculate Pascal triangle row function. But of course, we need to specify which row should be calculated for a Pascal triangle. So we need our n. So let's start with n equal zero, which will be defined outside of while loop. And we will send this into our function, but 
we also want to increase this value every time we run the function. For this, we will use increment operators. And at last, we need the keyword yield to return a value from a generator. This is mostly it. So now let's create an iterator based on our row generator and let's call the method next and see what will happen. And we got the first value, just an array with one item. But if we run next method a couple of times, we see that number of items in the array increases, so we calculate every row correctly. And now let's run for of loop based on this iterator and see if it works. Okay, I'm quite sure it works, but since we had infinite loop, I don't think it will ever stop. Okay, guys, I had to shut down Chrome and change the maximum value to 20. So let's run it now. Yeah, so it works with for of loop and uh, yeah, probably infinite loop was not the best idea I had. As you can see, generators are very elegant and concise. Generator objects, they have this duality. They are at the same time iterators and iterables. Let me show what I mean. For the start, let's see what is the type of the next property of our iterator. And it is function, which is what we expected to have. Now, let's do the same for symbol iterator property of the iterator. And it is also function. Today we covered a bunch of interesting topics, including iterators, generators, four of loops, symbols. I hope it was not too overwhelming and you found it useful. If you have any questions, please leave them below. And see you next week.